Hey guys, this is Sam from Fast Track ESL. Over the years, I've helped so many students prepare for CellPip and get amazing results, which they couldn't believe. I've used my experience now to come up with a tutorial that will help you deliver an organized, well-structured response in speaking that includes vocabulary and grammar that will surely impress any examiner. My templates will make time management so much easier and I've also included unique language boosters, which are advanced level phrases and expressions that will add to your lexical range and accuracy. In each tutorial, I'll also provide you with an example of how these templates and boosters are used in action. This is an advanced, comprehensive tutorial for those who want to achieve their highest potential with ease and confidence. I hope you like it. Welcome back to the channel. This is Sam from Fast Track ESL and I'm back with another CELPIP speaking tutorial. In this video, we'll be covering CELPIP speaking part one, giving advice. I'll begin by reviewing a sample question. I'll give you some tips and tricks for note taking and preparation. We'll go over the template, how best to structure and organize your response. We'll look at the language boosters and then we'll round it all off with a sample answer that will follow the template and the language boosters will be incorporated in it as well. So let's get down to it, guys. Part one is called giving advice and you're going to be doing exactly that. You will always be presented with a scenario in which you are supposed to give some sort of advice to someone. Now, First thing you got to remember is sometimes the question just says give advice. Sometimes it says give advice on what they should and should not do. So that's something that I want you to be paying attention to. For this task, you have 30 seconds to prepare and you have to speak for 90 seconds. Let's look at this sample question together. Your friend Mandy borrowed a book from her classmate and promised to return it in a week. Unfortunately, she lost the book during a camping trip. Give Mandy advice on what she should do to solve the problem. So as you can see, the question doesn't say what she should not do and only focuses on what Mandy should do. Okay, now let's go over the tips for note taking and preparation. We only have 30 seconds and this is one of those tasks where you have to speak for 90 seconds so preparation is even more important if you ask me because uh self of speaking part one and self of speaking part seven these are the ones where you have to speak for 90 seconds and a lot of students can't make it to 90 seconds because they haven't prepared well enough and they really don't know how to get the timing right so my first advice to you is to come up with two pieces of advice. Remember, two is the bare minimum. You, it's very difficult for you to reach 90 seconds if you only have one piece of advice. You need two. And you could also have three. That's for people who have more difficulty explaining and expanding their ideas. So if you're one of those people, if you feel that, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to elaborate and explain my advice enough, you can come up with three pieces of advice instead of just the two. Now, which one do I prefer? Examiners generally prefer two pieces of advice that are well explained as opposed to three pieces of advice that do not include enough explanations in them. So my advice is go with two, but if you practice and you see that you're consistently finding yourself in that situation where you have a lot of extra time left, then you might want to consider having three pieces of advice instead. Okay, let's take a look at an example. In this particular case, what are the two pieces of advice that I would give Mandy? First of all, I would say, explain the problem to her friend. She should probably just be honest and talk to her friend. Another piece of advice is to buy a new book to replace the one that was lost. Okay, is this enough? Is this all we need? 
Well, no, you should try if you have some extra time from that 30 second preparation time, what you should do is come up with some explanations, examples or details to support the advice that you're giving. For example, the first piece of advice was to explain the problem to her friend. Great. Well, I could tell Mandy being honest is always the best policy or tell your friend what had happened in detail. Give her exactly uh, the details of what took place because that way she would be more likely to understand. All right, what about the second piece of advice? If you remember, the second piece of advice was to buy a new book to replace the old one. Great, how can I support that? Well, I can say, try to get the exact same book. Search for it online. Maybe you can find a secondhand book that doesn't cost as much. Or add a note of apology to the book and hand it back to your friend. So as you can see, I'm trying to expand the advice that I'm giving and I'm uh, including details and examples. All right, now for the template. Let's see how we can make the most effective use of this template to best organize our response in a very clear and coherent way. So in this template, you begin by greeting. So you say something like, hi, and you include the person's name. Remember, the person's name is often included in the question. If it isn't, you can just come up with a name. You could say, hi, John, hi, Jane, any name that you like, just make one up. Next, you're going to review the situation. Remember, the question included a situation, a scenario. You need to provide some context for your listener by reviewing that situation. For example, you could say, I heard or I recently heard and you explain the scenario. Next, you're going to state the purpose of your response. So why are you making this recording? This is always the same. It's to give advice, right? So you could always say something like, I would like to give you some advice on and then you repeat the topic, you know, the types of things you should do or what you can do to solve the problem, something like that. All of this, this, these parts that we've covered so far, constitute the introduction of your response. Next, we're going to move on to the points. Point one is going to be the first piece of advice that you're going to give. And you could use the following structure for it. First of all, I think you should, followed by advice number one. Obviously, you're going to explain and add details. Ideally, this will be the details that you've prepared in that 30 seconds. If not, you just have to think on the spot. Then you're going to introduce point number two. And the structure you use for that is another thing you could do is followed by advice number two. Remember, if the question says, what are some of the things this person should and should not do, your second piece of advice should be focused on something that the person should not do. And for that, we have a different structure. The structure is having said that, I think you should avoid point two. So that's for when you need to give one piece of advice focused on what the person should not be doing. Now, whichever structure you end up using, you're going to have to explain that in the next section. And if you still have some extra time left, that is five seconds or more, you can add a wrap up. Now, I need to emphasize this, guys. If you have more than five seconds, you include the wrap up. If you have less than five seconds, forget about the wrap up and just let the time come to an end. The wrap up could be a statement like, so there you go. These are just a few suggestions for, and you review the topic. So what you can see here is the template that I want you to use for CELPIP speaking part one. Now it's time to look at some language boosters. Now, as I told you before, language boosters are phrases and expressions that lend themselves pretty well to the topic. And the topic here is to give advice. So we want to learn some structures for giving advice that can help maximize our score. 
impress the examiner and lead to a more favorable result overall. Okay, so when you're giving advice, try to adjust the importance of that advice using adverbs. For example, if you say you probably should talk to your friend, it means it's a good idea, but it's not a very strong piece of advice. If you want to give a stronger piece of advice, you could use adverbs such as really. For example, you really should talk to your friend. Or definitely, you definitely should talk to your friend. So for some pieces of advice, you could use adverbs like really and definitely. And for other pieces of advice, you could just go with something like probably. Okay, another structure is my suggestion is to or my advice is to. For example, you could say my suggestion is to talk to your friend or my advice is to talk to your friend. Pretty nice, easy structure that could be used almost anywhere in this task. Another expression is, if I were you, I'd. Notice the intonation. If I were you, I'd speak with my friend. You see, you have a rising intonation on the first part, if I were you, and then a falling intonation on the second part, I'd speak with my friend. An alternate structure is, if I were in your shoes, which is a little bit more idiomatic. So you could say something like, if I were in your shoes, rising intonation, I'd speak with my friend, falling intonation. The next structure is, you might want to try. You might want to try talking to your friend. Notice the use of ing after this structure. You might want to try doing something, speaking with your friend. The next structure is, it's generally best or it's generally a good idea too. So you could say, it's generally best to speak with your friend, or it's generally a good idea to speak with your friend. The next structure is my main or my personal recommendation is to, or my main or my personal recommendation would be to. And you could use it like this. My personal recommendation is to speak with your friend. The next structure is, in this kind of situation, I would recommend or I would advise. For example, you could say, in this kind of situation, I would recommend you speak with your friend. Now, what about situations where you want to tell someone not to do something? You want to give advice against something. One useful structure is stay away from. For example, stay away from embarrassing your friend. You see? ing from ing stay away from embarrassing your friend or you could say make sure you don't for example make sure you don't embarrass your friend so these are the language boosters that you could use in your response to easily increase your score with the use of structures that are sure to impress the examiner okay now it's time for us to look at an example. In this example, we're going to follow the same template that was introduced and we're going to try to use as many of the language boosters as possible. Let's see. Hi, Mandy. I recently heard you borrowed a book from a friend and promised to return it in a week, but then lost it during a camping trip. I would like to give you some advice on what you can do to solve this problem. First of all, I think you should talk to your friend and explain what happened in detail. If I were you, I'd be honest and I'd speak openly with my friend about what happened during the camping trip. I'm sure she'll understand once she finds out about the details. It's generally a good idea to explain everything in detail because that way, your friend would see that it's not all your fault. This would help your friend see things from your perspective, and she'll be more likely to understand. Another thing you could do is to buy a new book to replace the old one. In this situation, I advise you buy the exact same book. Make sure it's the same edition. Try looking for it online. You may even be able to find a used book 
at a more reasonable price. My own personal recommendation is to add a note of apology to show that you are truly sorry for what has taken place. I'm sure your friend will appreciate the gesture. So, there you go. These are just a few suggestions to make up for losing your friend's book. There guys, I hope you found this video tutorial useful guys. Remember to practice, leave a comment below with the language boosters that you are planning to use on your test. I hope you found this advanced tutorial useful guys. Remember to practice the template and record yourself so you can review and improve your performance. I've prepared an advanced tutorial for all eight sections of the CELPIP speaking test. You can access all of these tutorials plus additional content for writing and other practice material by clicking on the join button on the homepage and becoming a member of this channel. Good luck with your exam.